everybody! Today I'm going to tell you about this little game here, Age of War. This little game is set in ancient feudal Japan. This is a dice game. In this game we are rolling dice to win cards that are laid out on the table at the beginning of the game. Who gets most of the cards is going to be the winner of the game. It's a very simple game, but despite its simplicity, this game is really a lot of fun. This is Age of War. In this game, you roll dice to win the cards that you got out there on the table. Then once your turn is over, you're gonna pass the dice to the next player, and the next player is going to roll the dice and is gonna do the same. So you keep playing until all the cards have been taken. Every one of these cards gives the player uh, who owns it a certain amount of points. You're gonna tally up your points. If you got more points than the other players, you are the winner of the game. Now let me show you the cards a little bit closer. Uh, starting with the, the most important card in this game, and that is the card of the Shogun that you got right there in the center of the uh, table. The card of the Shogun is the most important card in the game. It is also the hardest card to get out of all the cards that you find right there on the table. During your turn, you got seven dice, you roll them. You see, you need two sixes here a five and a four, and then down here, if you find that symbol on a card, then there you cannot use dice uh, that have more than three pips. For example, you can use a three in combination with a one. That is possible. It's also possible to choose to choose like that. You can use uh, that combination and that works just fine. Just to give you another example, if you take a look at that other card, you got a free there, so you can just use a free there on that spot, and that's fine. Or you can combine a one with a two, and that is also possible. Okay, I, I hope you got that. It's pretty simple. So once you have placed all the dice here to cover up these spaces, you can claim that card from the table, and it becomes yours. This card, you see, gives eight points. Now, the card of the Shogun is, is a pretty special card because this card cannot be stolen by other players during the course of a game. It is possible in this game to steal cards that have already been taken from the table by other players. If you take a look, for example, here at these other two cards, uh, you see that symbol up there in the uh, left corner of the card? That is a six. You find that symbol on all the other cards in this game with the only exception of a card of a Shogun that we saw before. If, for example, this card has already been taken by another player and you want to steal it, all you have to do is place the right dice here on this card and add a 6. You add a 6 there and that's all you have to do to steal a card from, the other, from another player. So, uh, even if you claim a card from the table, that is not a guarantee that the card is, will always be yours. The other players can try to steal it during their turn, all right? There's only one way to protect your cards from being stolen by other players, and that is by completing sets of cards. You see these two cards here, they form part of the same set. Here we've got two Japanese deities. We've got Fujin, the god of wind, and Raijin, the god of thunder. If you collect these two cards and you possess these two cards, then you can complete this set. At that point, other players cannot steal one of these two cards from you. Then you see this number that you find right here in the brackets. If you own these two cards, then at the end of the game, you're gonna score the number of points that is indicated right there in the brackets. So instead of getting seven points, you will be getting eight points. That one extra point, doesn't sound like a lot, like a great deal, it actually is. That one extra bonus point can really uh, mean the difference between losing and winning in this game. Now let's take a look at all the sets of cards that we got in this game. Right here we've got a very nice set dedicated to the Ukiyo-e movement, which was 
an artistic movement that existed in Japan centuries ago. These are the three uh, main artists that uh, contributed to this artistic movement. We've got Hiroshige, who became famous for his uh, scenery paintings, and you got a picture there of one of his most famous paintings. We've got Hokusai, the great master, who invented the mangas. And right there you can see the Great Wave, a beautiful painting that I actually had the pleasure of seeing with my own eyes in a very nice exhibit in Milan. And I can assure you, this uh, painting is really nice. It's like a, a postcard. It's pretty small, but it's full of details. I really, really like this painting. Then we've got also Utamaro, who became famous for his portraits of the geishas. So these three cards, they all form part of the same set. If you collect these three cards and you possess all of these three cards, then the other players cannot steal them, and, and you're going to get eight points at the end of the game. Down here, we've got a set dedicated to the Japanese castle. We've got the Matsumoto castle and the Imeji castle. And these two cards, if on together, at the end of the game, they are worth five points. Then here to the side, we've got the pieces of the Japanese uh, samurai armor. We've got the katana, the samurai bow, the samurai mask, and the samurai armor. If you collect all the pieces of the armor, you can put them together and you can complete the samurai armor, the Japanese samurai armor. And these cards together, they are worth 10 points at the end of the game. It's actually pretty difficult to complete this set because you need, you see, you need to collect four cards, but it's not impossible. It's difficult, however, because players are certainly going to try and steal one of these cards from you. And then, you see up there we've got the two deities, we looked at them before, and the final two cards in the game are those two cards. Those are two legendary creatures that belong to the uh, Japanese mythology. We've got the Kirin and the dragon. And they form part of the same set. So these are all the cards in Age of War. You have taken a look at the cards, you can recreate these cards uh, with Photoshop, you can print this game yourself and you can play the game without having to purchase this game, because this game is actually pretty costly. It's pretty expensive, um, especially if you get it uh, brand new from a store. You can look for this game secondhand, that may be a viable option and a good idea, but you know, I just didn't care about it. I just went right ahead and I created my own version of this game uh, using Photoshop. You know, it was actually really a piece of cake for me. Now, um, in this game, you've got seven dice on your turn. You roll these dice. I like to roll these dice inside this ball, this metal ball, just like you do in a game called Chinchiro. It's an ancient Japanese dice game. I don't know if you've ever played it. You try to roll the dice inside the metal ball without having any die leave the ball, okay? So you have to be a little bit careful there when you roll the dice. This is an extra rule that I've added to the game that you don't really get in the original game. So I roll the dice here inside this ball. And believe me, sometimes it happens that these dice actually roll out of the ball. That can actually happen. And it's really frustrating when it happens because following my rules, if that happens, you know, the dice that, that get out of the ball are lost. Now you take a look here at the dice that you have rolled and the, uh, what you have to do is basically take these dice and place them on the card. So for example, let's try and complete the card of the Shogun right there, that is the most difficult card to, uh, to get here in this game. You see right here you need two sixes, a five, a four, and then here you need to put together a number of uh, dice to uh, be able to get up to four. Uh, but you can use only... Uh, dice with three pips, two pips, and one pip here on this spot. So if you take a look here at what we've got, we've got two sixes right there, so boom. And that is done. Let's take a look at what we got here. We got a five, so we take the five, we place it right there. Now we need a four and another four. Um, like I said before, we cannot use a four to cover this spot, but you see we've got a three and a one. Okay, so we can place the 3 here and the 1. Now, we're just missing the 4, and we've got two 6s here. So what we can do, we can remove one of the 6s, alright? 
this die is removed and we can roll one more time let's see if we get striking lucky so we roll the die and oh, you're not gonna believe this it's actually four just completed the card of the shogun i placed the show uh, the four right there and now the card is complete the dice now get removed and this card is now mine and it is worth eight points this is the card of the shogun this card is extremely difficult uh, to to complete and we just did it right here i mean i cannot believe it sometimes it can happen that the game can drag on um, a little longer than usual because this card in particular is extremely difficult it is extremely tough you need to get uh, you need to be really lucky to get this card we nailed it at the first attempt <laughs> that, that is quite uh, surreal all right so this was my review for age of war now I leave you to my final thoughts. Age of War is a very nice little game. I really like this game here because I've played it hundreds of times. This game is just so convenient, it is so handy. It comes in handy on so many occasions. When you just have about like 15 to 20 minutes, you want to play a game, you want to have fun, then this is a very good option. I really like this game here. Uh, this game is simple, it's fast, it's easy, you don't have to spend time explaining the rules, you can play the game right away. And in this game you're just rolling dice. So all you're going to do is just cross your fingers and hope that you are the luckiest player around. And, and you know, when you lose, you don't feel too bad, because you know that it was just bad luck. This is a filler game. Filler games are supposed to keep you company for just 15 to 20 minutes. They're not supposed to be uh, complex, complicated, uh, they don't come with a ton of rules. And this is not the only filler game that I own in my collection. I also have this game here. This is Tides of Time. This is a card game. And another card game. This is Terrible Monster. You see, these three games here, they're all filler games. They are small, but they come with a huge price tag. These games here cost a lot of money. And this is the only problem that I've got with these games here. They just cost a lot of money. They cost, they cost too much. They're too expensive. Every one of these three little games here costs almost 20 euros retail price. And that price is insane. I mean, 20 euros for just a few cards? Are you crazy? That doesn't make any sense. This is why I decided to create my own copy of these games. And you see here, for Age of War, I just needed a bunch of dice that I got from a Chinese store for 50 cents. And then I printed the cards with my own printer. And I was able to play this game for less than a euro. You can do the same. I showed you all the cards. You can print the cards and you can play this game. And you can also do that for the other two games that I mentioned before because I made a video also for those two games. Uh, and you can play these filler games basically for free instead of purchasing them, because they just cost too much money, in my opinion. So this is Age of War, very nice little game, a very enjoyable filler game that I like to play a lot. I've played this game hundreds of times already, and it's always a lot of fun. I'm gonna give this game a very good grade, eight out of 10, I think this game really deserves it. So this is Age of War, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next review. Oh, and I almost forgot, if you want to play another game that is just like Age of War, but that is a lot more difficult and a lot more complex, then I recommend you check out this other game here, Elder Sign by Fantasy Flight Games. This is a very nice game. Soon I'm going to make a review for this game also here on my channel, so don't miss that other video. This game here is basically just like Age of War, but in a bigger box and with more components. So I guess this is everything, everybody. Thank you for watching this review and have a good day. Bye bye. Sayonara. Wata.